Morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to St. Alphonsus. Today we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday. Our celebrant is Father Steve, assisted by Deacon Dick. At this time, let us take a few moments of silence 
to welcome the Holy Spirit into our hearts and prepare to receive the Word and the Eucharist. Please join us in reciting the entrance antiphon on page 992 in the hymnal. Like newborn infants, you must long for the pure spiritual milk that in him you may grow to salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With well, we shook you up on Friday, huh? Got you a little shaking and everything else around here in Hopewell? The earth shook. Did you know the earth shook? Uh, yeah. Oh, did you? Oh, okay. Yeah. Was it scary? No. Okay, no. good. Okay. <laughs> I didn't feel a thing. I was in a car, so I didn't feel a thing. It rained no time. I felt it later on, though. And hello to all those out in TV land there. I forgot to. It's been a while since I've been here. On the past, just in case you don't know. <laughs> My sisters and brothers in Christ, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, risen Son of God, you bring pardon and peace to all who put their trust in you. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, beloved one, your mercy endures forever. Christ, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, Prince of Peace, you are the source of healing for all who have turned away from you. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed, through the Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them. For those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give, Give thanks, thanks to, to the, the Lord, Lord, for he is good. His, his love is, is everlasting. everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, 
his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God. And everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the Spirit is truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My sisters and brothers in Christ, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit, whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into the nail marks, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus, although the doors were locked, stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. So the apostles are locked in that upper room for fear that what happened to Jesus may happen to them. But where was Thomas? It'll make you wonder where he went. Where did he go? 
Did they need bread or something like that? Did they run out of milk? Where was he going? Where could he, where could he really have gone? What could have drawn him out of there? Maybe he was out of there because that's what Jesus wanted. Who knows? Maybe Thomas just got tired of looking at the rest of them and said, I've got to get out of here. It's been eight days. It's time to go. <laughs> Whatever the reason, when he does come back, when Jesus does reappear to the, to the apostles, Thomas is there, and Thomas becomes the one. You know, he's the unbeliever, the Thomas the doubter for the rest of his life, and all the way on through all of us, he becomes Thomas the doubter. He's the, he doubted. He said, no, no, I'm not going to believe. And Jesus says to him, yeah, place your fingers. But he doesn't allow him to just get away with seeing him. The rest of them saw him. He showed them what happened to him. And they believed. But Thomas, he says to him, put your fingers here. Put your hand in my side. And believe. Because there's an earlier part in this gospel where it says that Jesus sent them out. He said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Two things, a number of things really happen in this gospel. He institutes the sacrament of reconciliation, confession. Whose sins you forgiven are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained. He also gives them the Holy Spirit. Now we'll celebrate that later down the road for Pentecost, but he's already done it in this gospel. And then sends them forth. Thomas, who was the doubter, becomes one of the stronger Uh, proponents of sending out and going out. He's the one. He eventually winds up, the story is that Thomas' story eventually winds up in India. So he does go out and send the word out. He does go and bring that word of Christ into the world. He certainly does. As each of the apostles does. But that's just the beginning of their story. Because now it's the end of Jesus' story and he knows he's done. He's finished his part of the mission. They've been with him for years now. He has finished his part of the mission. I gave you everything, including himself, when he gave us the body and blood and said, this is my body, this is my blood, redo this in memory of me. Two sacraments. Eucharist, reconciliation. And if you really want to say it, by receiving the Holy Spirit, confirmation. All of that takes place in this one gospel. And then Jesus sends them out. But as he sends out the apostles, he sends out each and every one of us. He sends us out as well. That it is our responsibility now, just as it became the responsibility of Thomas and the apostles to bring God's word into the world, it is our responsibility to bring God's word out into the world. Because if what we do is we come here each Sunday, we listen to the word of God, we receive the body and blood of Christ, and then we shut the door and we're gone. Then we're wasting our time here. We are being sent out to bring Christ into the world, to take Christ outside these doors. It really comes down to the way we lead our lives every single day. Do we practice our faith? Now that doesn't mean we have to be standing out on a corner with a Bible in our hands screaming up and down. But it's the way we lead our lives. It's the way we treat each other that matters. It's whether or not we truly reach out to those who are in need when they are in need, not when it's just convenient for us. It's about being sent forth by Christ Each and every one of us, by our baptism, we are sent forth to bring Christ into the world. And at this time of the year, we have great things to proclaim. We always have them, but this is a special time of year. Jesus Christ is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. We get to proclaim the risen Christ. Because he died on that cross for us. But if that's all he did, then we're wasting our time. It's that he was risen. It's that third day. It's that day that he rises from the dead, that he comes out the empty tomb. That's what we're here to proclaim. Because his death leads to new life for each and every one of us. His His death leads to eternal life for each one of us. 
Because once Jesus rises from the dead, he opens the gates of heaven. He opens the gates for each one of us. But now it's up to us to spread that word. Because we all know somebody that isn't coming to church on Sunday. We all have family members who stopped. And I don't know, we don't meet, I don't, it doesn't matter why they stop. Maybe they stopped for a good reason. Maybe something happened. You know, the church doesn't always treat people well. You know, we try to do our best, but sometimes people mess up. Sometimes it happens. Sometimes people have good reasons. Or at least they think they have good reasons. And other times we just got lazy. COVID allowed people to get lazy. So they suddenly figured it out. You know, I don't have to go. I can watch it on TV. Look at that. I can have my coffee, sit in my pajamas, and watch Mass on TV. But then I don't have the Eucharist. I don't have the contact with the people who pray each day, with the people we come together with each Sunday to pray for ourselves and for each other. Community prayer is so important to us. But it also means that we have to take it outside. That means also that we have to take it outside to those, maybe in our own family, maybe our neighbors, whoever it is, and ask them to come back. Ask them to join us. You know, we don't have to be Thomas going out to India and going all over the world. All we have to do is take care of things here at home. Invite others back. If we lead the life that we're supposed to, as followers of Christ, Others should want to lead that life because we should be happy with that life of following Jesus Christ. Our example should be something that draws people to us, draws people back to church with us, draws other people to Christ. It is truly about the things we say and do every single day. It is about us proclaiming truly by the way we live our lives, Jesus Christ is risen today. Alleluia, alleluia. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may walk with him in the newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism, by which, the, by which we once renounced Satan and his works, and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you to respond, I do. Do you renounce Satan? All his works, all his empty show. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water in the Holy Spirit and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. They get it first. You all squint like it's acid, for God's sake, it's water. <laughs> Look how wet I get, see?
gathered as believers who are one in heart and soul. Let us pray for the world in the name of Jesus, our Redeemer. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Led by Pope Francis, the successor of Peter, may the church boldly bear witness to the resurrection. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Shower the peace that Christ bestowed on the first disciples throughout every land and nation. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. May the homeless and dispossessed find among today's Christians the same generosity that marked the community at its beginnings, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless those who were baptized and confirmed at Easter. May they always find joy in their new life in Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Open our eyes to recognize the risen Lord in the breaking of bread and to follow him in his risen life, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hold in your loving care the sick and the suffering, helping them to persevere through their trials, especially those on our bulletin list of the sick, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. May all who have gone from us in the hope of resurrection be welcomed into the kingdom of God, especially Chetty Silvani and Elizabeth Stevens and all and also those who have been, we have been asked to remember at this mask, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Hear all of the prayers requested by our Hopewell Valley community, those written in our prayer request book and prayer request box, and those held silently in our hearts, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join me in praying the Eucharistic Revival Prayer found on the back cover of the cards in the pew. Lord Jesus, we worship you in the blessed sacrament. Bless our work reviving a true and lasting devotion to you in the sacrament of your body and blood. Help us bring others to perceive the eyes of faith, your real presence in the Holy Eucharist. Enlighten the minds of your people and set our hearts on fire with love for you, O Jesus. Fill us with the desire to receive you often in Holy Communion. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine we offer you. For the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessing With humble spirit and chide heart, they be accepted by you, Lord, man, sacrificing a sight this day. Be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. 
Thank you. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable, God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands. The praise and glory of his name. For our good and good of all is holy church. Accept, Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people and of those you have brought to new birth, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, and at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb, who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. They are overcome, therefore overcome with paschal joy. Every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and in giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Alphonsus, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Yeah. Peace with you. Victoria, peace with you. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, you should enter under my roof. Only say the word and my soul shall be healed. In the body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. The communion uh, hymn found on page 994. Bring your, bring your hand and feel the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia. Before communion is distributed this morning, let us pray our spiritual, our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
the body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. We have a few announcements. I don't get to do this too often, so I like them. Save the date. The Columbiettes are hosting a tea party. Tea party, don't say that sound delightful a tea party, with a flower arranging workshop at 1 p.m. Well, that's so fair. But the tea is all right, but the flower arranging. One. On Sunday, May 5th, at St. Alphonsus Hall, details are in today's bulletin. Deacon Dick Curry will be leading a four-part Bible study program to explore Mark's gospel. The program will be held at St. James from 7 to 8.30 p.m. beginning Monday, April 22nd. Join us as we watch season four of The Chosen Together. The Knights of Columbus and the Columbiettes will be hosting pizza before the viewings at St. Alphonsus starting at 6.30 p.m. on Friday, April 19th. Viewings will take place in each of our churches on varying days and times. Please check the bulletin 
when it is most convenient for you. The Columbiettes of having a diaper drive starting next weekend through April 21st. All sizes are needed and appreciated. San Alfonso's Church is having bingo night, Saturday, April 27th. Be sure to buy your tickets at the Mass today. This is a popular event and sells out quickly. It does sell out quickly. I know one of the callers, and let me tell you, it's a great night. Get out there, buy your bingo tickets. Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament will be held here at St. Alphonsus immediately following the 10.30 a.m. Mass until 3.30 p.m. Divine Mercy Sunday. Please stop in and take some time and moments for quiet prayer and meditation. And uh, finally, if there's anything left in the bulletin, please take a bulletin home for you today, or check our website for more information about activities throughout the Catholic community of Hopewell Valley. That's it. Thank God. I am leaving for uh, Ireland tomorrow. I will take your prayers with me, but the rest of you can't go. No room on the plane. No, I wish you all could go. Um, uh, so I will keep you in prayer as we go through our pilgrimage to Ireland. Um, uh, please keep us in your prayers as well as we go through. Um, I will be back in about 10 days. So you're not losing me. I'm just disappearing for a little while. You don't see me that often anyway. So I'm just, at least not at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's early, you know. I don't like that. Have a great week. Enjoy the beautiful weather. At least it's not raining. The ground shook a little bit, but it's not raining. So, you know, you've got to take the good with the bad. Have a great week. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you. And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. <laughs>